Hi. Uh, we next look at the uh, question three part B. Now question three part B has the circuit with two branches, the current I1 and current I2. Branch one has two loads, load A and load B, whereas branch uh, two has load C. Now what we are required to do is to calculate the real power and the reactive power for load A, load B and load C. And then we are supposed to calculate the overall real power, that means all the combined effort, reactive power and the complex power as well as the overall power factor. We then finally determine the currents flowing through I1 and I2 to these two loads. Alright, let's see how we answer these questions. Now we can start to answer this question by first looking at each of the load and see how we can derive the real power and the reactive power. We look at load A. Now basically load A, the information given is 1000 VA. Now 1000 VA is the so-called complex or apparent power. Yes, I got it. It's 1000 VA. Right? Now if I have a power factor of 0 0.9, it means that the power factor phase angle is 0 0.9, right? The theta is actually cosine inverse, that's 25.84 degrees. In other words, if I were to draw a power diagram, now this is lagging, eh? so lagging means the real power is this way, the reactive power is this way, and the weapon power is this way, and the angle here is 25.84. Now we can calculate uh, PA very directly, is PA, the real power, is just the weapon power times the power factor, cosine theta. So that's 1000 VA multiplied by 0 0.9, so it's 900 watts. Now if you know this, if you look at this, this is the right angle triangle, so I can use Pythagoras theorem to calculate QA. QA is actually the square root of SA square minus PA square. Okay, so that's uh, 1000 square minus 900 square. The whole thing square root. That will give me 4 35.89 TAR reactive power. Okay, so this is the real power of load A, this is the reactive power of load A, and the complex power of load A is 1000. Okay. Now I look at uh, load B, same approach, but this time the power factor is 0.6 which means the phase angle difference is about 53.13 .13 degrees. Now this time it's leading, so my power diagram, power triangle rather will look like this. So this is PB, this is QB, and this is my apparent power B with an angle of 53.13 degrees. Again, the same thing, the real power PP. Uh, this, this time given is the real power. So real power is PP is 600 watts. Right? If I know PP and I know the angle, I can calculate the other side. So PB from here, tangent. QB, tangent, theta, tangent. 53.13 degrees is actually QB over PB. Therefore, QB is PB tangent 53.13 degrees. That's equal to 600 times tangent. 600 times tangent 53.13. 
799.99 so I call it the 800 right so I have PP have this now my apparent power for SP my apparent power for SP is just the square root of PP square plus KP square Full square root. So this is 600 square plus 800 square. This square. That gives me um, what? That gives me a thousand. Right. So this uh and finally for load C, what do I do with load C? Now load C is slightly different because from what I see here, load C is four hundred uh, at the angle of minus ninety degrees ohm. Right. So if I want to calculate the, uh, in other words, it has no real power. So P C is zero. But QC can be calculated from B squared upon XC. So that's 200 squared upon 400. So that gives me um, 100 DAR. Right, so we have the final load C. Real power is 0 watt. The reactive power is 100 VA. In other words, this is a capacitor. Next, we want to determine the total complex power. So we have, we can write that total real power. Real power is equal to, let's add up all the real power components. So load A real power that was uh, 900 watts. Load B will power 600 and load C was 0. So total is 1500 watts. Total reactive power reactive power is equal to um, 435.89 PAR plus 800 VAR plus 100 VAR so the total power gives me I'm sorry uh, this should be negative because it is uh, it is inductive inductive whereas these two capacitive so the total will be 464.11 DAR. Right, so the overall complex power overall complex power goes to 1500 minus G464.11. Oh, should be writing the other way around. It's positive, it's negative, it's negative. Hmm? It's negative. This is a capacitive, capacitive is inductive. Okay. So, if I express this in polar form, that will be 1570.2 at the angle of minus 17.2 degrees Ga. Right, therefore, the power factor, the overall power factor, is equals to, is equals to cosine. 
17.2 degrees leading it's become 0 0.955 leading because the capacitivity is we want to calculate I1 and I2 uh, I2 is quite straightforward I2 is is equals to the voltage voltage um, divided by the impedance uh, reactant sorry so that's 200 volts divided by 400 the angle of minus 90 degrees it gives us 0 0.5 the angle of 90 degrees ampere whereas I1 I1 we need to calculate the complex power first right complex power for the branch so complex power for branch 1 eh? call this S maybe it's actually uh, the reactive the, the real power 900 plus J435.89 plus 600 minus J800 so that gives us um, 1500 minus uh, 11463 ohms, right? And one in terms of is 1543.56 with an angle of minus 13.64 degrees Va right now remember S is equal to B multiplied by I the conjugate conjugate just the angle flip right so therefore I conjugate is S over B it's 1543.53 at the angle of minus 13.64 degrees divided by V is 200 over 0. That gives me 7.72 at the angle of minus 13.64 degrees amps. Therefore, I one will be seven point seven two but positive angle thirteen point sixty four degree in ampere. Okay, so I one I two is I two I two here. Alright, so uh that's all for this question. Thanks for watching.